hello, hello. Okay, yeah, thanks, Mishu, for the nice introduction. So <coughs> I'm here to present this joint work of uh, on the impossibility, <coughs> on the impossibility of general parallel phase forwarding of Hamiltonian simulation. And uh, this is a huge joint work. It's a joint work with uh, Nai Hui Cha and <coughs> uh, Tai Ming Chuang and uh, Yao Qing Shen and uh, myself, Yao, <coughs> Yao Ting Ling and uh, Yu Qing Shen. Okay. And uh, we are in a whole bunch of different institutes right now. Okay. And uh, okay, so, let's, uh, so this is a mouthful of a title. Let's uh, try to describe the uh, problem first. Okay. So the problem starting with, well, uh, people start to know quantum mechanics start from uh, 19 something, okay? So the first of the 20th century. And uh, well, in the end, uh, we describe quantum mechanics as this uh, linear algebraic problem. So we have uh, uh, state vectors, those uh, k-size that describe our quantum system. And uh, there are Hamiltonians H that uh, describe the evolution of the system. So your system will start with uh, some <coughs> size zero, that's uh, some vector. And uh, after some time, we think the system will be in this state, <coughs> kate psi t. And uh, the Hamiltonian H, how does it describe the evolution of the system? Is that you show, uh, if you solve the Schrodinger equation, Schrodinger equation, you see that uh, <coughs> uh, psi t is related to psi zero by this equation. So psi t will be exponential e to the i h t and uh, tan psi zero, okay? And uh, so we know how to calculate the quantum mechanics and uh, things seems fine. But uh, if you really think about calculating this, then you find out that the calculation is really hard because, uh, <coughs> so what is this H? Uh, H is, uh, <coughs> uh, H is a big matrix uh, you and uh, so you are exponentiating some matrix here. But uh, this H matrix is huge. It's an exponential size matrix. And also those k's are exponential size. So you found out that if you want to use computer to calculate this, then <coughs> this calculation is really hard if you just do brute force. If you try to write down this vector and uh, apply this matrix, uh, sorry, write down this vector, apply this matrix, and uh, calculate this uh, new vector at tan t, then it's pretty hard for uh, for brute force calculation, or for at least we don't know how to do it in classical computer. Okay, and uh, so <coughs> now go to back to historical, <coughs> excuse me, uh, historical <coughs> story. Okay, so Feynman actually figured this out. This out uh, very fast. Okay, so this is <coughs> a quote from Feynman back when we don't quite have computers. But he figured out that uh, the quantum mechanics is uh, pretty hard to calculate. So he see that uh, nature is in quantum mechanics. So if you want to simulate nature, then you will be pretty hard, okay? It looks pretty hard because it's exponential size. And, uh, but he has a greater intuition that uh, the nature can simulate itself because nature does go in time in linear time. The nature doesn't require exponential time to be a nature, okay? So if you want to simulate nature efficiently, then maybe we can simulate it with quantum mechanics also. So <coughs> he has an idea about quantum computer before we have quantum computer, okay? And uh, so more formally, we have this uh, Hamiltonian simulation problem. That is, <coughs> so okay, so back, go back to this picture a little bit. So the idea is uh, we have this nature that uh, starts from some quantum state psi zero to another quantum state psi t and uh, we want to have a computer to do the same calculation. So we want to have a computer that uh, start with some state psi zero and uh, <coughs> in its memory and uh, calculate its psi t at, uh, <coughs> after some time. And we want to do this pretty fast, okay? And uh, so in more precise form, we have this Hamiltonian simulation problem, okay? So we want to simulate uh, this quantum state psi t <coughs> that's a uh, time involved state of your some Hamiltonian psi zero, okay? And, uh, <coughs> okay, so what's the input to our computer? Now we are going to get into more computer science. So here our input, psi zero, of course, and uh, the description of H that uh, tells us uh, <coughs> how the system evolved. And uh, also an important parameter here is evolution time t, okay? So how long we want to evolve? Uh, you can kind of imagine if the evolution time is really short, 
then your end state and the start state is not too different and it will be easier, okay? And also nature takes more time when you evolve more time, okay? And uh, there is a HR parameter that we dis didn't describe before, that's a precision epsilon. Uh, it's not too important, but <coughs> uh, in our simulation, we always use this epsilon error because uh, nature is continuous and uh, you in your digital computer, you have some approximation, okay? So our output will be, ideally we want this society out, but actually we have uh, approximated uh, <coughs> output, so we have uh, approximated output say, uh, say T theta, and uh, it's written like, uh, uh, hopefully you can see this, so it's a little different from the HO state. So the HO state has this smooth edge and uh, we have this uh <coughs> kind of digital edge here. Okay, so we output the approximated <coughs> state, psi T theta, uh, and they need to be epsilon close to the actual opposite state psi t in some distance major epsilon, okay? And uh, so that's a little digression on the precision, but uh, back to the actual quadrant, okay? So the question of the series now is we want to think about the evolution time. So <coughs> how does our computation scale with the evolution time, okay? And uh, okay. So if you want to evolve time t, then how much computational time does it take? Uh, is it linear in t or <coughs> as in nature? And uh, uh, there are a lot of previous work done on this, and the short answer is yes, okay? So all t algorithms are sufficient, okay? And uh, here are a list of work that uh, do done have been done on Hamiltonian simulation, okay? So you see that the uh, very first work we have this, uh, kind of brute force, <coughs> kind of uh, <coughs> naive simulation where we destructalize the uh, evolution <coughs> operator and we have a runtime t square and uh, you see that in different model and uh, we get better and better. You see this uh <coughs> uh, linear t and uh, yeah. <coughs> we see that we have a linear t or linear t log t <coughs> over log log t <coughs> algorithms and uh, and uh, the algorithm have a different method and uh, they are in, di <coughs> they have different constraint over Hamiltonian, okay? And uh, we are going to go over the type of Hamiltonian later. But for now, the bottom line is uh, order t is sufficient. And uh, well, as a series, now we have uh, upper bound of uh, linear in t, then the natural quadrant is quarter about the lower bound. Uh, do we require omega t <coughs> time, okay? So can we go faster than linear t? And uh, well, uh, then the answer is uh, here also, okay? So as you see in the slide, uh, we <coughs> it has also been shown that omega t is necessary. And uh, well, we have three results here, and uh, it's kind of funny. So the first one is, uh, well, it's the earliest one and uh, the one we'll focus on. So on uh, 07, we already have this uh, omega t necessary result, and uh <coughs> is in the Oracle model. So basically we have an uh, <coughs> Oracle problem that uh, uh, we embedded to our Hamiltonian simulation. And uh, the Oracle problem is parity, so we embed the, <coughs> if you know the detail, so parity is a problem that requires linear value query to solve, okay? And uh <coughs> so people, <coughs> so in this BCS paper, <coughs> uh, sorry, BACS paper, the <coughs> The authors are able to embed parity to the Hamiltonian simulation problem, and uh, they show that <coughs> because parity requires linear number of queries, so Hamiltonian simulation also requires linear amount of query <coughs> to simulate for time t. And uh, we have uh, two other results that are in different model, and uh, but have uh, okay. So the HHKO result also kind of in uh, omega t lower bound. And the A17 result uh, is a bit different. Uh, so the result, the lower bound is actually not quite, <coughs> uh, not quite linear, but uh, it's a different model. It's in plain model where they don't require oracles. Okay, okay. and uh, so this is kind of the end of the story if you just think about the time dependence of Hamiltonian simulation. Uh <coughs> Okay, so we have order t upper bound and uh, we have omega t lower bound. And uh, so we have matching upper bound and lower bound and uh, kind of uh, there's no gap between them and uh, our job is done. Okay. And uh, so now we kind of change our problem a little bit. 